remind you that relationships are important to us as a family and we would love to encourage you to please keep on connecting in your groups, praying and encouraging each other. Then we would just like to remind you that we will only have a devotional on Wednesday mornings from now. So thank you for each one who helped us generously with that. Then we are excited about about our midweek services every Wednesday evening from 7 So good morning family, um, I hope everyone is doing well and that you are still blessed and that you are still excited following Jesus. Uh, maybe it's just a cliche that I start the way I'm starting every single time, but you know what? It is so amazing following Jesus. It's so amazing to have a loving relationship with Him. And, and if, you are, if you don't have one, I want to encourage you, please um, be hungry for God, be hungry for His Word, be hungry to have a relationship with Him. And so, so all the viewers that are watching and everyone, all the spiritual family members that are watching this morning, I hope that you are excited because I'm still excited following Jesus. As you all know that we started with a new series called Money Matters. And I have the privilege this morning to speak about God as our source of provision. Or God is our source of provision. So let me pray um, and dedicate the service to God this morning. Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you, Lord, that your word is a lamp unto our feet. I thank you, Father, that your word is like a double-edged sword. And I pray this morning as I minister to your people, God, that, that your word will encourage us, that your word will motivate us, that your word will penetrate our hearts and, and our minds and renew it in such a way that we will see um, you in a different way, that you will see your provision in a different way, Father. And so, Lord, I thank you this morning. I thank you for who you are, the great I am. And Lord, we just bless you. We just honor you for this service this morning. We thank you for such amazing time of being online this morning, of, of sharing your word. I thank you that you are with us and that you bless us with your presence, Holy Spirit. So bless this word, bless this time together in Jesus' name. Amen. Let me start off this morning by sharing a very short story of my life. And, and, and I believe this morning, as I start off with the story, um, it is, has reminded me of how God um, is really and still uh, the provision of my life and for my family. About 2008, um, I heard the call of God of being in full-time ministry. Um, and what exciting times, but also what a, what a very interesting time um, it was, because at that specific stage, I didn't know uh, um, where my provision would come from, but all I just knew in my heart in 2008, at the end of 2000, 2008, that God is calling me for full-time ministry. And so, so, so as I become part of, of Every Nation, um, in 2008, in August, um, I, I just heard the pressing of God, just the calling of God even more greater in my life. Um, and at the end of 2008, um, as I became a member um, of, of Every Nation, um, I heard the call of God again, and I just I felt just as prompting in my spirit that, Alistair, you are called for full-time ministry. And so in 2009, I was sent to ministry partnership training, um, and what a great time it was in Pretoria. A time of, of learning how to raise ministry partners and how to, how to, how to raise people supporting you financially. 
Um, but there was a one specific lady that in the training that came to share a testimony of what ministry partnership meant to them um, as a family and, and what impact it made um, into their lives of her hearing the call of God and, and really just stepping into the calling of God, knowing that God is their provider. And there was one specific verse that she shared, um, Psalm 23 verse 1, that says, The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. The Lord is my shepherd, in the other version says, I shall not want. And so, so as she shared that specific verse, I felt just a drop in my spirit. Um, that word just became a rhema word to me, a word, a now word in my spirit. Um, and as she shared the testimony of, of how God just provided for them, journeying of being part of ministry partnership, how that specific time, how God's provision in their lives was just so amazing. And I felt that that specific time, this is the way how God will provide. And it's now almost 12 years of being into full-time ministry. And, and I believe in my heart that God has been my provider since I've heard the call of God being in full-time ministry. And so why I'm sharing this this morning with us as a spiritual family and, and all the viewers that are watching is because God wants us to understand this morning that He is our provider and that we will lack nothing if we find our faith and our hope in Him alone. About two weeks ago, I've ministered on to about the church of Laodicea, about the, the letters to the church in the Revelation. And I spoke about the church of Laodicea. And how, how these church completely kept their focus on their wealth and not kept their focus on God. And so it's with us as Christians also family is that God wants us to understand that He is our provider. That our, our, our heart and our focus mustn't be of what we can do, what we can achieve, what we can get um, and what we can do to see our success by having a lot of things in life. The church of Laodicea, they lost their focus on God and they became lukewarm. Why? Because their focus was not on God, but on the things that they had, their wealth and everything in it. And I believe that God is calling the church, is calling you and me with the following verse in Matthew 6, verse 19, 21 that says, do not store up yourselves treasures on earth where moths and vermin destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moths and vermin do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Family, we live in very interesting times. And when we live in interesting times and challenges that we face, specifically in this time of COVID-19, sometimes our focus and our ways of living can change because of circumstance, because of challenges. And it actually describes, the action actually describes where our heart is. And I want to encourage and I want to challenge us this morning that God wants to be our ultimate provision. That your finances and everything that you have belongs first to God. And that He wants to realign our hearts and our focus in such a way that we will not look to the things that we have and the things that we've achieved and the things that we've accomplished, but that we will look into what God wants to be for you and me. He wants me and you to be completely dependent on Him. He wants me and you to focus on Him because He's the ultimate provider. The reason why we have things and the things that we've achieved is because He's our ultimate provider. About two weeks ago, my wife looked at me and, and she looked specifically at my, at my gray jacket that I used to wear many times. And this jacket was given to me about five years ago by my spiritual mother. And she bought this jacket to me and, and she gave it to me. And so, so the jacket I had wear almost, I would almost five years winters that I actually wear it. And, and my wife looked at me and she said to me, 
Alistair, it's time for you to trust God for a new jacket. And as you all know me, I'm not worried about what I wear and what I have. It's all about God, what God wants to do through my life. And, and I could remember that moment where she said, Lord, please send Alistair a new jacket. And that same day, I felt in my spirit that I need to contact someone who's actually selling jackets and that person didn't pick up. But her prayers allowed me to see God's provision. And as I put off the phone and the friend didn't pick up, one of my other friends contacted me and said, where are you now? And I said to him, I'm on my way home. He said to me, okay, fine, let, let, me, get you, let, let, let me get you at your home. And when he got out of the car, he gave me a bag. And in the bag was this jacket that I'm wearing currently now. About one person, my wife praying in the morning, me planning to do my own thing, getting a jacket from someone, buying it from a place. And I could really see God's provision saying, Alistair, I'm still your shepherd and you will lack nothing. And so this morning, I want to share three th- I want to share a few things this morning with us. The first one I want to share is that we need to understand God's, that God owns everything. And because He owns everything, He will provide for us. 1 Chronicles 29 verse 14 says, But who am I and who are my people that we should be able to give as generously as, generously as this Everything's come from you, and we have given you only what comes from your hand. Everything comes from you, and we have given you only what comes from your hand. God wants you and me to understand, firstly, everything belongs to Him before things belong to us, and that He is ultimately our provider. Romans 11 verse 36 says in the NIV, For from him and through him and for him all things are all things. To him be the glory forever and ever. Philippians 4 verse 19 the ESV says, And my God will supply every need of yours according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. God wants us to understand this morning, family, that everything that we have and everything that we own belongs to Him. And He is ultimately our provider. The second thing that God wants us to know this morning, God is the greatest giver of all givers. And the reason why I'm sharing this specifically in John 3 verse 6 is that, For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. So if God is the greatest giver of all givers, then why not trusting him? The word of God says in Proverbs 3 verse 5 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Acknowledge him in all your ways and he will make your pastor. Family, it is so easy to, to lean on your own understanding. And if God is our provider, then sometimes we must, then sometimes we often find ourselves in a place where we try to do our own thing because we are leaning on our own understanding and we try to figure out His provision in our own lives. We try to make our own plans. But God wants us to understand this morning, God wants you and me to understand this morning, that He is ultimately the giver of all givers. And if He is the giver of all givers, then our trust and our faith needs to be in Him. Because faith is a substance of evidence, something hoped for, which is unseen. So if He is the giver of all givers, then our faith and our trust needs to be in Him. And that we don't need to lean on our own understanding but to put our faith and our trust in Him alone. God wants to be our provider, and He wants to be the giver of all givers in our lives. But He's calling you and me to trust Him, to have faith in Him, and not to lean on our own understanding. Because when we lean on our own understanding family, we sometimes carry and follow our own will and our own lives by seeing God's provision. 
And the reason why we do that, family, my grandfather used to say, don't keep up with the Joneses. And I want to encourage you this morning, don't keep up with the Joneses. Try to be you. And try to come to a place of contentment, of receiving and knowing God's provision in your life. The third thing this morning is that God will test our hearts of giving. Malachi 3 verse 10 says, Bring the full tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house, and thereby put me to test, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open the window of heaven for you and pour down for you a blessing until there is no more need. Family, I believe that God wants us to become obedient to His Word. And part of His will be obedient to His Word by giving. God is testing our hearts this morning whether we will bring our tithe to the storehouse. And where is the storehouse? The storehouse is where you f receive spiritual food, spiritual encouragement. And so if you are part of this spiritual family, I want to encourage you, please make sure that you tithe. Make sure that you tie to the storehouse because that is coming out of a place of obedience to God. Not because of us as leaders this morning, but because of being obedient to God. Luke 6 verse 38 says, Give and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For with the measure you use it will be the measure back to you. For with the measure you use it, it will be measured back to you. So family, let, us, let you be encouraged this morning to give. Giving is a heart motive. Where does your heart stand by giving? 2 Corinthians 9 verse 7 says, Each one of you must give as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly or reluctantly, or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. So where does it start? Giving starts within the heart. Giving starts, family, where the heart comes in line with what God wants us to do. God wants you and me to be cheerful givers. Just as He provides for you and me, so He wants you and me to be givers in His kingdom. And the only way for you and me to be the givers in the kingdom of God if you and me knows what's in the heart by giving. God wants us to be encouraged this morning in such a way that we will be cheerful givers in his kingdom. Because ultimately, he is the provider in our lives. And the last point I want to share with you this morning a harvest of giving. 2 Corinthians 9 verse 6 says, Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Family, there's a harvest awaiting for you and me. A harvest of giving. For you to experience the harvest of giving, it comes back to one thing. Are you a cheerful giver? Is your heart in the right place by giving? Because God says in His Word in 2 Corinthians 9 verse 8, But He is able to make all grace abound to you, so that have all sufficiency in all things at all times, you may abound in every good work. I want to say it again. God is able to make all grace abound to you, so that having all sufficiency in all things at all times, you may abound in every good work. 2 Corinthians 9 verse 9 says, He has distributed freely, He has given to the poor, His righteousness endures forever. So family, Part of knowing who the provider of our lives is and where the provision comes from, you need to know the giver of provision. And I want to go back by ending off this morning with Proverbs 3 verse 5 that says, 
trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Acknowledge you, him in all your ways and he will make your path straight. And I believe this morning as a family, God is calling you and me not to lean on our own understanding, not to put our trust in the things that we have, not to put our trust in what we already achieved. But God is calling you and me this morning to put our trust in our faith completely in him. Why? Because when we do that, we will not lean on our own understanding. We will not stop being a giver in the kingdom of God. We will not stop being a blessing to people. We will not stop bringing our ties to the storehouse. Why? Because he is ultimately the provider. The Lord is my shepherd, I will lack nothing. And this morning, I believe that God is speaking to you and to me. He's speaking to us as a spiritual family, speaking to you and me that is watching this morning the service. God wants you to know that he is ultimately the giver of all givers. And the things that we have received from him comes from his hand. Why? Because God wants us completely to lay down everything to lean not on our own understanding and allowing him to be our provider. So I don't know where you are at this morning. Have you been living a life that you've leaned on your own understanding? You've leaned in your own, on your own understanding, doing your own thing, not knowing the giver of the provision, the provider, which is God. And I don't know about you this morning, family, I believe in my heart that God wants us to come to a place of trusting Him and having faith in Him, knowing that He is our source of provision. And so as I shared this morning, I want us to take time this morning. I want us to take time this morning to come before God and to repent before God and say, Lord, forgive me. Forgive me of leaning on my own understanding. Try to figure out the provision in my life. Try to make plans to see the provision come to pass in my life. And so I want us to come to before God and repent, take a time of repentance. Say, Lord, this morning I choose to lay down my own understanding and to trust and to put my faith in you that you are ultimately my provider. So let us pray. Father, I thank you this morning that we can come before you, Lord, and repent this morning that we've that we've, lean, that we've leaned on our own understanding, that we've depended on our own things and our own ways of seeing provision happening in our lives. And this morning, we want to declare fresh that you are ultimately our provider, that you are the King of kings and that you are the Lord of lords and that you provide to our needs. Thank you that you are the giver of all givers. And that you've even given your only son, Jesus Christ, to lay down his life for, you, for us. And this morning we stand with thankful hearts, knowing that you are a shepherd and we will lack nothing. And I want to pray that over us as a church, over us as a spiritual family, over every viewer that is watching. This morning, Father, we want to declare fresh that you are a shepherd and we will lack nothing. That you are our provider and we will lack nothing. Thank you, Lord, that you will supply all our needs according to your riches and glory. And I pray that over us as a spiritual family that we will see your hand of provision in everything we do, and that we will not lean on our own understanding. I thank you this morning, and I bless you this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. And so, family, I trust and I hope this morning that you are encouraged, but I also trust this morning that we will not lean on our own understanding that we will know who our provider is, and that is God. He is the source of provision. The things that we and me and you have comes from Him because He is ultimately the provider in our lives. May you have a blessed Sunday, may you have a blessed week lying ahead, and may you just see God's hand um, in everything that you do. May you have a blessed day. Thank you.